Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a look at the new Linux Mint Debian edition that just came out a couple of days ago. And uh, this is, uh, I looked at the beta for this not too long ago. We're going to go ahead and install it in a virtual machine. And uh, probably in about I don't know, a couple weeks uh, or a month or so, I'm going to install it on my uh, media PC so we can get a more full comprehensive review. Uh, this will just be a quick look. And uh, what we're going to do is first, if you head on over to Linux Mint's main web page, linuxmint.com, and go to the download option, you'll see that you have the option here to download uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition 3. And this is Cindy, um, not to be confused with Cindy Lopper, but just Cindy. Uh, I don't know, maybe it is Cindy Lopper. Huh? Anybody? 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 Bueller. 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 All right, so you can download the 64 or the 32-bit, and then of course you can grab your uh, grab it from Mir, or you can grab the torrent. The torrent is nice if you want to download from there. It helps take the server load off. And then if you can also seed it from time to time, that actually helps uh, the community with it all as well. Don't forget to verify it. Um, this may not be completely updated yet. This was the verification for the beta. Let me have a look at what the, oh, nah, that's not what I wanted. Let me see if this is updated yet. Ooh, it looks like the, uh, looks like the verification images are not up to date yet. Let me go ahead and see if they dropped it here though. Okay, yes, they did. Okay, so here's the old Linux Mint uh, ones. And then these ones here are the, uh, it looks like they probably only have the cinnamon version out right now. So they have the Linux Mint Debian Edition 32 and 64. Um, I did not verify the ISO when I just downloaded it. Um, I will verify it before. In fact, you know what? <clears throat> Let's just go ahead and verify it. Um, so to verify it, I'm just going to pull up a terminal window here. And let me find my, there we are. There's a desktop view. And let's just go ahead and... Uh, Zoom this guy in a little bit. All right, so what we're going to do here is, let's just go to my downloads folder and people bust me, well, no, not dear, dire. People bust me when I want to type in dear. It's like, oh, DOS, hey man, I'm a recovering Windows user. Leave me alone. Uh, I know I can use LS as well. Um, so you can see the uh, Linux, uh, let's see, Linux Mint 19 Cinnamon. Okay, it's this one here. The the Linux Mint 3 2008-18. So that's kind of the one we want. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. And then we want to do SHA256 and paste that in. Really? It's not in there? Oh, it's, it's, it's SHA. Don't. I don't do this enough. There it is, <laughs> SHA256SUM. Okay, so this is gonna take the, um, uh, this is gonna take the SHA256SUM of this, and we're just gonna compare it to the one up here. So um, that is what it records, and we just wanna basically compare it with this guy up here. I'm just gonna do a spot comparison. If you really wanna hardcore compare it, then you're gonna want to, um, you know, maybe drop it into a, um, a spreadsheet or something and compare it. But everything here, it looks good. So it did actually download, verify itself correctly. So, so that's good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump back on over to the browser. All right, so you can find your release notes on Linux Mint Debian Edition 3 on the website. Um, so of course, uh, the locked root account. So if you want to enable that, they have instructions for there. Um, Debian Stretch does not support um, Secure Boot, and so you will need to disable it. This is something that uh, I did the walkthrough. People asked me to do a solid walkthrough, and I did show s disabling Secure Boot. I think there were a few different errors that I had received. Uh, people asked me questions on email. Make sure you are disabling Secure Boot unless you plan on running only that one operating system on there. Um, Linux Mint 19 should work with Secure Boot, but not if you already have a Windows in there. So there's some extra steps you'd need to do to completely replace it. Um, 
but uh, just simplicity, just turn off secure boot. You're going to have to do that over here. We do not have VirtualBox uh, guest editions. I'm not going to bother installing those, so we're just going to use a smaller. Um, we're going to use a uh, smaller window for this. Um, there is possibly some sound and microphone issues. We're not going to get a chance to investigate all that, but they are telling you to install uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control uh, if you are having some issues. Um, KDE apps utilize this. Um, this here to install uh, the libraries needed for running KDE applications. And of course, it's based on Debian Stretch, which is great in that it is going to be rock solid, but it's bad in that some of the things are going to be a little bit older. So you can see more information about the passwords and the live settings, uh, things like that. And so uh, with that being said, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and boot up the uh, we're going to go ahead and boot up the virtual box. First, I'm actually going to boot up the live key here. Um, and then we're going to have a look at what uh, what that's going to look like. Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and start this. Now, I already have installed this, and so we're not going to walk through the installation process. But I am going to show you that there are two different installers on this. Uh, I did not know that the first time, and somebody pointed that out. So I want to go ahead and uh, verify that, because if one of the installers gives you problems, just switch to the other one. Uh, one of those is the Calamaris installer, and the other one, I believe, is whatever one comes with Debian. Uh, there's two installers. I don't remember all of the uh, ins and outs as to which installer is which necessarily. But this is going to boot us here into our virtual box with kind of a reduced screen. We have the main installation icon up here. This is the one that was giving me problems attempting to install this on real hardware at one point in time. But if you come down into your administration, you can see that here is the main one on the desktop and Calamaris is the other one. So you do have a couple of different options for your um, uh, for your uh, installation. So again, I already have this installed, so we're just going to go ahead and shut this down, and then we're going to restart it, um, restart the machine. And as we restart the machine, then we're going to go ahead and um, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, just have a look at the at the desktop here. Okay, so here we are. I did not do anything to this. I just installed it. And so, of course, we have our rendering in software mode. This is going to happen anytime you are running this in a virtual box, unless you've installed the guest editions. Uh, that's basically going to help the system run a little bit smoother in a virtual box. Of course, we have our Linux Mint welcome screen here. And uh, with our welcome screen, it is walking us through our first steps, just like Linux Mint 19 system snapshots. It wants you to set this up so you can go ahead and create your system snapshots. This is kind of like uh, starting with Windows Vista, which didn't work well. Windows 7, it does the system restore points. So uh, system snapshots, this uses... Uh, um, Uh, this uses, I always mess this one up as well, so let's do that. So we're using TimeShift. I always want to say Time Machine, which is the Mac application. So this utilizes TimeShift to set up your backups and such. I don't actually mess with any of this type of stuff on Linux. I just back up the individual system folders because, like, in Windows, this is a big deal because... You know, Windows just isn't easy to reinstall and get itself all set back up. Linux is horribly easy, uh, which is a great thing. And so uh, what what I generally just do is make sure I have a backup of the files and the configurations for my applications, which you can do just by grabbing the um, a copy of the, your home folder. And then it's... For me, it's just easier to reinstall a Linux distribution and drop the home folder on there than it is to mess with Time Shift or any of that. So uh, regardless, though, they do want you to do this. The advantage of setting this up, particularly if you are a new user, you are limited in your number of computers or things like that, this will create good system restore points. So if an update crashes something, the Linux Mint will automatically go back and restore your old configuration from Time, time Shift. So... Uh, be aware of that. So it is a good thing to set up. If you want the multimedia codecs, 
um, which you might want to do if you would like to do anything having to do with uh, audio or video then uh, they have the button there just click on that and that should launch up the application all right the update manager over here uh, so now it's asking us to install the codex so now we're to type in my information there go ahead and let that go and now it's actually is actually installing the codex so it downloads the package and it runs through the installation step Okay, so we're making some changes, running the package, and configuring all the things that you need to do this. So why is why do you see this in Linux oftentimes? Well, it has to do with the fact that a lot of what it takes to play good audio video is still proprietary or um, not necessarily open source. And some people who want to remain as pure as they possibly can, they may not need all this stuff. So it's it's an option to install it, but it may not be installed by default. Now, of course, the Linux Mint based on Ubuntu has the option to install all this right out of the box from the installation screen because Ubuntu is focuses a whole lot more on working out of the box versus this Linux Mint Debian edition is really focused on can we get a good Linux Mint build going based upon Debian and a lot of people say this is I mean they say the Linux Mint team says that this is is a challenge for them to get it to work and I think they're doing a great job of their challenge other people suggest that maybe they're doing it as a lifeboat in case Ubuntu goes off the walls wacko which honestly um, I would accept either either argument. Officially, this is just a challenge to see if they can get it to work. All right, so now we are on our update manager screen. You can go ahead and click on this, and it's going to get you all of the information for the uh, for the update. So uh, Debian system adjustments specific to Linux Mint and uh, Tomcat 8. Um, it does ask us if we want to switch to a local mirror. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Um, if this were your... Uh, main system you'd probably would want to do that uh, basically what that means is is it going to pull the packages and repositories from closer to you or from further away the reason you generally want to do that and that is a fairly obnoxious blue button that's up there you all will, will invariably accidentally hit is because if it is pulling from from repositories on the other half of the world it's probably going to be running a whole lot slower than it will be um, if you are simply uh, simply downloading them you know at the university in your hometown and that's really what the difference has to do so now it's telling me it's up to date let's go ahead and run this may as well um, once again you can see we are entering the password a lot this is part of the security so now it's uh, it's saying this these are the two mirrors so we have two basic mirrors the packages from Linux Mint and the packages from Debian. Of course, if you are running the um, the standard Linux Mint 19, this base is actually going to be the Ubuntu packages. So click on each one of these, and then what it's going to do, it's going to do a speed test. It's going to determine where is the best place to download this from. So let this speed test go, and then what it's doing is it's checking all of the different mirrors to see where is the best place to download. Generally, you want to pick the fastest one, uh, which can fluctuate from time to time. It does look as though the original one that was selected, which is packages.linuxmint.com, is probably going to be the fastest. Um, like Advanced Hosters is usually up there, but that's like half the speed right now. Um, and it's possible that they're a little bit slower because a lot of people might be experimenting with this. So let's go ahead and do that. And then once again, click on the one for Debian, and it's going to do the same thing. Uh, so obviously, we don't want to use the unreachable one. It's 2.5 megabyte per second. Well, that's Lehigh. Actually, I think Lehigh is not too far from me. Uh, let's see. MIT. I don't always let this completely go. I find some that are wicked fast and just run with it. So like, I'm not seeing, oh, there's another one. Uh oh, there's more. There's more. Debian mirrors. Let's do that one. That one's like really official. Let's do that one there. So now you have the green bar up here. It tells you to uh, update your apt cache. So what is going on when you're updating the apt cache? That is essentially the same thing as booting up a terminal and typing in your sudo apt 
update. What it's doing is it's going to pull all your repositories and it's going to make a list of everything that's available and it's going to see is there anything that is up to date or not. That's essentially the same command, it's just from the GUI. So now it's updating everything and then when that's done updating, now it may or may not tell us that we have an update. Since this is brand stinking new, I didn't figure that there'd be an update to it yet. So it, it does tell us our system is still up to date. Okay, the next thing we might want to do is our system settings. So inside of our system settings, we can adjust our backgrounds. Uh, we just have a couple of them to choose from. Let's go for uh, Kevin T's background because that's just awesome. Um, we have the effects and the themes. So this is just looks like a standard. This is the Mint Y theme. We have a variety of different themes installed on default. Looks like all the same ones we get in the regular um, in the regular Debian or the, the regular Linux Mint. Then of course we can add and remove themes. This is going to go online and double check online to see how many different themes are in the official repository. So you can go ahead and grab a theme that suits you well. Um, I actually run a slightly different theme on each one of the user accounts on the computer I'm recording this on. So uh, don't forget, every user of the computer can go in and uh, change their own theme and make it their own. Um, we have desktop. Uh, this will determine which icons are showing. So like, I find the computer icon in Linux isn't quite as useful. I do like the home, the trash, the mounted volumes, and the network, particularly since I use my network a lot. Um, allow icons for missing monitors to be displayed on existing ones. Well, that sounds like a good tip, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, desklets are things that you can put on the desktop, like clocks or things like that. We have notifications. Um, so privacy, remember recently accessed files is disabled, so that's good. Uh, one of the things, okay, there's online accounts, so you can add your online accounts. This does look like it's an older version um, I think this is based on the, dictated by the version of Cinnamon, I think, or, um, I think so. Let me look at the, never remember what the name of this is. All right, system info. Okay, so we're wearing 3.8.8. .8. I thought a newer version actually listed in online accounts listed NextCloud, not OwnCloud. If you do use uh, NextCloud, you can use the OwnCloud one to link it. Um, so you can link all of these types of things. Of course, this now, I'm not 100% sure on this one, but I can tell you on Linux Mint 19, the connection to your next cloud now will sync your calendars to any calendar application. It syncs your contacts to any contact application in addition to your files. So that's actually an improvement. I'm not sure if they have that on uh, this one as well. Here's your startup applications. So depending on what you want, you may want to come in here and turn some things on or off. Like I usually will turn off the mint welcome. I don't need it to pop up all the times. I don't generally use flat packs, so occasionally I'll turn that off. Um, I'm just, I, I'm kind of old school. I just want to use the, the way that Linux has always been doing package management. I found some flat packs to be not running quite as good, but that was me. Uh, we can turn on our firewall. Um, most Linux distros, the firewall is disabled by default. Uh, so this one, it looks like that is uh, no exception to this. So you need to come over here, click the button, turn it on. Now our firewall is enabled. I don't generally enable these because I'm behind a very good router with a very good firewall. I'd probably be an extra measure of protection to do that. But, um, you know, for the most part, I don't worry about that quite as much. There's our system settings. Uh, and of course, our software manager. This should be the latest version of... Uh, Linux Mint software manager, uh, which it is, and this is just a really nice application. Um, so you can look for the various things that you want. So here's your maps, uh, PIA manager, oh, there's private internet access VPN. Um, actually, if you check the link in this, uh, links in the description below. I actually have an affiliate for um, private internet access if you're thinking about that. Uh, Banshee, that's actually my favorite, uh, my favorite media player on Linux. I prefer that to several of the uh, other ones. Mostly it has an old Windows Media uh, feel, and I really like the way Windows Media worked. Um, and I have a kitty that wants to say hi. Hello, everyone. Use Linux Mint Debian Edition. It's awesome. Thank you, kitty. All right. So the kitty agrees we should be using Linux Mint Debian Edition. Um, you can search around for anything in here, and... Um, with this, you'll see that we already have 
uh, uh, we already have uh, LibreOffice installed. Hey, Kitty, you're like, all right. Kitty's just like, dude, make room for me. I'm chilling. I don't care what you think. All right. All right, so there we'll have a lot of uh, applications already installed, so that's nice. What's this giraffe? Uh, diffuse. Okay, so there is our first steps. Here's documentation if you want that, release notes and the documentation built right in there. So here is our Linux Mint Debian edition. Once again, I can't change the resolution to be full screen here um, without installing the VirtualBox guest editions, which I'm not going to bother doing for this. Um, we'll see it full screen when I get this installed on my other computer, which will be after I run Deepin. I'm going to put Deepin on it first. So what do we get out of the box? Here's our main menu. Um, we do have the full amount of software. Some people think this is a little bit more bloated. Uh, some people really like it. Um, I really like it. I'm of that camp because it has all the system tools that I may or may not use, but in reality, I use them more than you may think. Font viewers, yes, I use those. I do do some graphic design, and looking at fonts quickly is a good thing to do. Um, also, there's things like the USB stick image writer and, and uh, stick formatter. Those are uh, very frequently used. I use the screenshots. I use the character map. That's something a lot of people uh, overlook. Uh, don't use the calculator. I'll use the archive manager and um, the disks utility. Uh, for graphics, we have GIMP installed by default. My guess is this is still 2.8. One of the downsides you're going to get with this is it is based on um, Debian Stretch. And uh, Debian Stretch is, I mean, it's being as it came out last year, it is now actually a little bit older. And so the software repositories are going to be a little bit older. I do have a video on how you can install newer software. So if you do need to run the latest GIMP or you do need to run the latest LibreOffice, you have that option uh, and it's fairly easy to do. I'll go ahead and uh, link that in the video here so you can find it later. Um, let's see, we do have Thunderbird by default. Um, LibreOffice, I'm pretty sure is going to be five. Probably, I don't know, I think Debian's might still be running 5.2. I can't remember. But let's have a look at what. Oh, nope. That's not what I wanted. There we are. It is 5.2.7.2. So a little bit older version of LibreOffice. And that's kind of your uh, your trade-off with, uh, with Debian as a whole. This isn't just Linux Mint Debian Edition, which does have a reputation. Like Linux Mint has a reputation for having slightly older software. Um, and Debian, uh, that rolls its release about at the time every time a glacier thaws. And so you will get some older packages in Debian and in Linux Mint. Does that bother me? Not in the slightest. You do get all of the security updates very rapidly. The things you don't get is the version changes, adding new features or things like that. You can manually do those if you need them. And the reality of the matter is I don't like my system to change a lot. And so I, that's why I like the Debian branch of things and why I like Linux Mint, because I'm not going to get an update, which is going to change everything, which means that now I have to spend a half an hour refiguring out how to learn a program that I knew how to work yesterday. And that's kind of the approach I take. So we have VLC and Rhythmbox and Media Player, which is a good movie player. I'm not, that seems a little overkill for me, um, just because there's, there's a lot of overlap in those, particularly with VLC. Uh, Universal Access Onboard, these are uh, the backup tool to make the backups. This is something that wasn't actually in the startup, and maybe it should have been. Um, but here you can backup and restore personal files, and you can backup and restore um, software files. And uh, I have some tutorials also about utilizing some of this, and I have another one that tells you how you can link this to a, an online um uh, not an online, but a uh, network attached storage system onto a NAS drive. So I'll link those videos in as well. We have Synaptic Package Manager by default. For those that like that application, you uh, have that. And here is our system monitor. Okay, so our system monitor here, it looks like we're running on just about a gig of RAM, which actually is not too bad for Cinnamon. So that kind of tells me that it's not running probably quite as full capacity as the other one. Uh, here's pr preferences for Adobe Flash Player. Preference, go away. Can I do that? 
Okay, all of these things in here, these are actually all of the individual things that you can get just by accessing the main system settings, which is over here. So uh, everything in that preferences, system preferences list is the icons that it's on the system settings page. All right. There's our places, there's our administration, and uh, that in a nutshell is Linux Mint Debian Edition uh, uh, Cindy. Uh, this is very good. Um, who's this for? Well, this is a little bit harder to get installed. Uh, depending on which installer you're using, you may have to um, manually partition your hard drive. And so that automatically puts it into a little bit more of an advanced build. Also fighting between the EFI and the uh, legacy BIOS boot uh, could potentially cause some issues for some people. Definitely turn off that secure boot regardless, um, or you will have a hard time getting it to run. Uh, so it's not for your newbie, but it is for a person who likes the Linux Mint feel and really likes Debian. This is that perfect balance. You got the you got the core stability of Debian, and um, with the core stability of Debian, you also are not going to be um, uh, you're not going to be uh, running too close to the Ubuntu end for those that don't like that. Uh, and it's it's stable, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be solid, and I don't really foresee any issues. What I'm going to do is I will run it on my computer after I'm done with my deep end test, and so we'll see um, we'll see how I, how I like it once we get everything all set up over there. But in a nutshell, it's not for the new user, but it is for the person who uh, who does want stability, doesn't want the software on the system and settings to change quite as much. It will take a little bit more fighting than Linux Mint 19 to get everything working, most likely. That's just a guess, um, just because the nature of Debian is a little bit like that, but I would not use that as a, as a criticism necessarily. Um, it's, it's just a little bit, a little bit harder to get running. So, uh, that was my take on Linux Mint Debian Edition 3, uh, Cindy. So if you like this video, don't forget to check out the various support pages. You can find me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M that's T O M M. Um, you can get some switch to Linux merch at shop.switch2linux.com and check out all the other ways to help support the channel at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.